How you going? Welcome to Ben's Lab. Here we are on a lovely sunny beach on, in Lawn, Victoria, on the southeast coast of Australia. Um, I love it like this, it's fantastic. Whoop, gotta watch out for that. Tide's coming in. <laughs> anyway, um, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, sea squirts, speaking of the ocean. Uh, like sponges and corals, they appear to sit on the ocean floor although they're doing nothing, but they're actually, uh, that difference actually ends, and they're actually more similar to us than you'd think. Um, I mean, these are things that are pretty damn bizarre. Uh, for instance, did you know that sea squirts uh, at a certain phase in their life cycle actually eat their own brain? For sure. Uh, if you want to know more, then uh, join me today on Ben's Lab. Sea squirts. These cool little marine creatures are found in coastal waters all around the world, generally in warmer regions, often clinging to ship holes and colonising new areas like weeds. So what are sea squirts? They are a group of sessile marine organisms, so known in scientific circles as tunicates. They belong to the animal group known as acidians. They actually form uh, somewhat of a bridging group between vertebrates like us and the more primitive invertebrates. And I'll show you more later on. Sea squirts and other marine vertebrates, such as sponges, are very different. From an unknown common ancestor, all life on Earth radiated, including bacteria and archaea, protozoans, plants, fungi, and animals. Sea squirts belong to the animal group Chordata, which also includes animals such as frogs, horses, and other vertebrates. As far back as 1866, Biologists noted that all vertebrates share certain characteristics at a certain point in their lives as embryos. These characteristics are seen in human gill slits, a nerve cord and notochord, a stiffened rod, running along its back, the forerunner of our backbone. Sea squirt larva display these characteristics too. It is the dorsal nerve cord and notochord which links them to us. The sea squirt larva is actually more complex than the adult, with complex organs including primitive eyes, a motile tail, and a cerebral ganglion, a very primitive brain. The larval stage is quite brief. Sometimes after only a few hours after hatching, the larva finds a suitable place to put down roots, so to speak. The brain and other organs are absorbed by the larva as it undergoes metamorphosis, much like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Why eat its own brain? It no longer needs it. The adult is now essentially a pump drawing in and filtering food particles from the seawater via muscular squeezing and the beating of hair-like projections called cilia. Food goes in this end, seen in blue, and comes out the other. Okay, so uh, what is a sessile marine organism again? You may be asking yourselves that, uh, so I'll explain it to you. Um, essentially, a sessile organism is one which, uh, well, at some part of its life cycle, will attach to a substrate. Uh, in the case of these sponges here, have attached to this uh, seaweed and uh, they're going to stay there for their entire life. You see more of them here. See how they attach? Because well, sponges obviously don't move, so they spend a whole lot in one spot. Similar case with these corals here, which have started to grow on this on the stem of this uh, seaweed here. And that's essentially all sessile is. It stays in the one spot its whole life. Sea squirts are quite hardy colonising new areas readily. They have many fascinating properties, which make them of keen interest to science and medicine. They may even hold promise for anti-cancer therapies. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been fun making it. If you like learning and want to see more, subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll know when new stuff comes up. Feel free to like, put comments down below, and share as well with your friends. I'll see you next time. Bye from Ben's Lab.